Hej för att du är här. Hej hon. Är det här ju? All good. How's it going? Fast det är probably the most aspiring day. Because tomorrow is Friday. Yes. Tomorrow is Friday. And also, certain people uh, in my organization work four days a week. So Thursday is their Friday. That's Very nice. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining, everyone. Uh, let's give it another minute for more folks to join. <laughs> Right. I think we can get started with quick intros. I, I think we haven't done this in a while, so and we have a lot of new people. So I think it will be good to have some quick intros. Uh, so I can start uh, myself. I'm Ricardo, um, uh, one of the co-chairs for Tag Runtime, and I've been involved with a lot of you folks are, uh, already in this working group and with the CNCF. Uh, and I'm happy to continue working to improve uh, Cloud Native AI and, and, and take it forward. Uh, maybe we can go in, in order here, Huamin. Uh, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, so my name is Huamin Chen. I work at Red Hat. Uh, so I've taught a CNCF over the um, eight years, ever since I think the, after the founding days of the CNCF. And this uh, Cloud Native AI group is one of the newest contributions I'm working on right now. And also a very much pleasure to see all these uh, folks here. We have been alone for quite a long time. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Sean? Hey, everyone. Um, I, th I think I know a few of you have been around for a little while. Um, yeah, just wanted to start getting involved, uh, work at Lambda Labs, where you know, we do a lot with GPU, so I think it'd be uh, uh, good to see what what we can do here, if there's any way I can help contribute to the group or or just see what's going on. So great to see everyone. Awesome. Great to see you. Uh, Bo? Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Neil here. Uh, I'm from IBM Research. Uh, Actually, I work in uh, the digital health department, but uh, Hua Ming and I are starting uh, doing some work around the uh, related to this group. So <laughs> he invited me here. Awesome. Welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. Claudia? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Claudia. I'm also from IBM Research. Um, uh, I work mainly on uh, anything Kubernetes and OpenShift, and specifically now for more than a year, been focusing on observability for um, AI training workloads on, on OpenShift. And I'm trying to be uh, as consistent as possible to join in those calls, which are always a lot of fun. Awesome. Good to see you, Adele. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, good to see everyone in the call. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been joining the calls uh, for a while now. I am a long time Kubernetes uh, uh, CNCF uh, user developer, and then turned product manager. Now I'm uh, working for Red Hat and focusing on all things uh, OpenShift. Uh, so glad to be working and uh, collaborating with you all. And looking forward, the group is growing. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see that. Uh, Vijay? Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm a recent joiner. I work in Microsoft and AKS uh, for uh, serviceability. And yeah, this is a personal thing that I'm very interested in. Uh, sort of a new journey. Yeah, welcome. Uh, Nipendra? Nipendra, sorry. Hi, folks. Uh, this is uh, Nipendra Jani from Bangalore. 
Uh, I run a company called Cloud Yoga. Uh, we train people on containers, Kubernetes. Uh, so I published a book on Docker back in 2015 and authored the first CNCF course on Kubernetes, uh, which was published on edX 2017. Um, so of course, uh, things have been changing and I just want to kind of keep pace with AI and I think it's, uh, and I also run the, the book club uh, for the Indian Zoom India time zone and we did uh, the paper uh, reading uh, for the CNAI uh, in the last two session we finished today and next week we're starting with uh, MLOps uh, Kubernetes uh, machine learning on Kubernetes from next week onwards so and just want to be in this call to see what's happening and then keep myself updated and see if I can contribute something yeah, thank you thanks welcome uh, we got Kathy. Kathy, are you unmuted? Kathy, sorry, yeah, hi everyone. Um, yeah, this is Kathy. Uh, I work, I've been working on Kubernetes for quite some time in cloud natives, currently working on cloud native AI at Intel. Uh, I'm also part of the CNCF uh, technical oversight committee, the TOC. Very nice to work with everyone in this working group. Awesome. Uh, Hannah, Hannah Zhu, welcome. Hi, um, my name is Hannah Zhou, and I'm a, I'm an undergrad at Cornell, so um, I'm like much younger. And um, Tommy invited me to help with his um, YouTube summary project, and I uh, look forward to working with everyone here. Great. Welcome. Welcome to the meeting. Welcome to the group. And, uh, Nina? Nina? Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. I work at Red Hat and all things OpenShift with Adil. I'm also a K-Native steering committee member. Um, and you know, Red Hat open source go hand in hand. So this is my second time joining the meeting. Uh, looking forward to working with you all. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, Sh Shangen? Sh I hope they got the name right. Yeah. Uh Hi everyone, my name is Shangan Chen and I'm also an undergrad student. I'm planning to graduate this long. So uh, I'm in computer science and I'm really, really interested in AI and data science. So I was look forward to learn from and, and work for uh, work to you guys. Thank you. Great. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Uh Vino Tini. Vinotini, yeah. yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Vinotini from GoPaddle. So we've been building low code IDs for Kubernetes for a while. Um, so off late, uh, our focus has been on bringing this Gen AI into this low code ID and um, helping users to troubleshoot Kubernetes issues. Um, so I'm very, very happy to be here and connect with a very diverse set of uh, uh, people over here. And I in the coming days, I'm uh, looking forward to learn and contribute to this uh, community. Great, welcome. Uh, I think we got a few more, Victor. Yeah, this is Victor Lu. I'm an independent database consultant, but almost, uh, I can say semi-retired, uh, just having fun here, learning about all this open source uh, stuff, especially AI. Yeah. Awesome, welcome, uh, Joel. I'm trying to go quicker here so we can get get started with the cool. Hello, Joel. Uh, Robert, do more platform and infrastructure uh, currently at Cisco. Awesome. Uh, uh, Ron, we've seen you around quite a bit. So I think you're muted. Yeah, I think you're saying hi, but but you're muted. But... <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. There's ten thousand buttons trying to find the button. Hello, everyone. I'm Ron. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. No worries, no worries. Yeah, we're doing the intros here, and I think Andre, I think you don't want to leave anyone out. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Andre. I work at Apple. Um, I'm part of Qflow community. I was there for the last six years. I'm a part of Steering community of Qflow, and I was helping uh, these folks to build a white paper for AI. 
and I've been involved in the AML community on Kubernetes for the last six or seven years. Everyone. Perfect. Did I miss anyone? Uh, I think uh, everybody is. Uh, Kenneth, you just joined. Were you doing some intros? Do you mind doing a quick intro about yourself? Kenneth? Mm -hmm. All right, I think um, we can move on. Uh, so uh, first I item on the agenda is VJ created this uh, outline for scheduling AI workloads on top of Kubernetes. Uh, that's available publicly. Uh, this is a quick link. So the folks on the call, please take a look and review any comments. Uh, so the idea is that once we've finished resolving these comments, we can actually publish this on our website uh, where we have um, right now the Cloud Native AI white paper, uh, but we, we're going to be adding more documents and, and this is going to keep growing. So we have things going on, like including a, a glossary and other documents that we'll talk about in a little bit. But any comments about this or PJ, do you want to, want to say something about this? Yeah, I, I just have one quick question, and uh, I'm just wondering: should we uh, rename this, or should we keep the existing name, or should we uh, rename it to something? You know, one of the points that uh, Adele was suggesting, uh, like how to evolve the cloud native ecosystem uh, to address issues around scheduling and batch workloads, or should we keep the existing name, or maybe it's something that we can discuss it. Uh, Sure, we can discuss any any common were, suggestions. Were you, were you just uh, VJ? Hi, this is Ron. Um, were Were you saying um, sh should we make it more specific? Because all those yeah. things are scheduling, right? <laughs> yeah, because uh, scheduling is is good, but I also sort of uh, frankly liked uh, Adele's points, which is he's going to cover next. Uh, uh, so so yeah, so just renaming it to make it more specific. Uh, yes, yeah. And maybe we can discuss this in the group just to be sure. Yeah, I mean, my gut check is is less specific the better for initial papers, because we're trying to get as many people to read them as possible. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, it depends on the content. So I, I glanced at it. I, I'll take a, a deep dive tonight. Um, but okay, I, I I get your point. Yeah, and if uh, just one more thing to add, Ricardo, if uh, for everyone, uh, if if anyone has even points that they want to mention, I'm happy to expand on them because I'm sure there is so much. Uh, just mention the points here and, uh, you know, if you have some content, feel free to add. Otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm happy to expand. Uh, yeah, so just feel free to add either content or even points. It, it would help. Great. Yeah, yeah. I've, already, I've already added a lot of comments, so <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can go through the doc and... Uh, I will. Yeah, I think... I think uh, so this, I, I'll talk more about this in the in the next point. Uh, but but generally, I'm trying to think about how are we positioning the problems that this group is solving, and then within that is scheduling AI workloads, for example. So this is uh, this is more how we want to structure our contributions and artifacts that we produce um, so that they are visible and solves a gap for the community. I have a question on the on this back. So here, I think it's it's a very good you know spec. I think to identify the difference you know between AI workloads and current cloud native workloads. Um, so here it said it runs you know a lot of short tasks in parallel. Uh, is this for both training and uh, inference? Uh, maybe that's a question for VJ. Is this you, you got this feedback from? Um, is you from own, your own experience or you got it from your customers or? VJ? Turn off the... I'm talking in mute. Uh, so, oh. so <laughs> yeah, so you're so right, Kathy. This is uh, more of uh, working with uh, people who work with customers, and those could, those could uh, mean like people, folks like like cloud solution architects. Um, uh, so because they have exposure to, uh, you know, wide variety of scenarios, which I alone would not have. So, so yes, and this is also inputs you know, which others have added from, uh, from uh, you know, in, in the working group. But, uh, but uh, yeah, but if you see 
anything that needs to be corrected or uh, you know added, modified, subtracted, please feel free, Kathy. Uh, I'm I'm sure your your views will be very useful. Yeah, good. I also like mm -hmm. other yeah. I also like others to 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 get feedback to this, you know, um, because yeah. I, where where I didn't find the difference, right? Uh, if there are other differences or there are different, you know, uh, different uh, perspective, that would be great, you know, to make a uh, make what we have put there to be, you know, very uh, accurate and also uh, useful. Uh, this is very great. It's a great great start. I think it's really a, a great initiative. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, okay. Could I just have a comment here? So we have this white paper listing the five areas of investigation. So this uh, scheduling could be one of those. Um, if not, some um, it's not mistaken, could be one of those uh, related to performance. With us, we are starting scoping the deep dive sessions of the five sessions or five sections that we have. So that could create some of the structures how we are going to organize the follow up papers on these directions. I think that sounds reasonable to me. I think Andre has his hands up for for some time. So Andre, you can probably. Hey, I just very quickly on this topic, and thank you for this video. I think it's very interesting. So just a couple of questions. Like, so first of all, maybe I'm a little bit out of it. But are we going to publish it separately, or where where it's going to publish this this work? So there. Yeah, is... not. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the idea is to publish that on the the, the working group um, website. But obviously, if there is something that we want to do with uh or with the CNCF related to uh, their content team and how we publish the AI white paper, we can do that as well, like we did before KubeCon, right? So, okay, so it's like a dedicated content just specifically for scheduling and model workloads, right? Yeah, yeah. So, All right. Yeah, so uh, I think my, my, my second question is like, <laughs> so we're speaking about AI, we're speaking about ML. So I think like, should we be consistent, like some sort of scheduling? Because like we're speaking about training inference, right? Plus like maybe data prep. So fine tuning, right? So we're calling this scheduling AI workloads, right? So usually AI is an application which which build on top of the ML, you know, capabilities and other like algorithms that we have in machine learning. So I don't know if we need to call it like scheduling ML workloads to be consistent, but I'm open to your suggestions. Um, so these are these are good points, Andre. Yeah, and I think Huamin also was suggesting the same thing. Maybe maybe I'll start as like a, you know discussion on what we should name it because that will also give it a focus, and then and then we proceed. Um, just, just a quick reminder on that. This question came up with the last white paper and we yeah. agreed, uh, to focus on AI more than ML. And again, it is a bit of marketing, right? Um, but that's the point, right? People were, I mean, it goes to, you know, who we're trying to target and things like that. If we, if we get too specific in naming things, we lose a big group of people is I think kind of the end the, the point, um, and so yeah, anybody who point. actually does know this, where you get in, you get into the article and you read line one that this is ML, fine. But the title, though, should not, um, we should be careful with the, those kinds of things. Yeah, I think it's a good point. I mean, I think it's up to us to decide like whether we call it AML all the time, right? Which will cover, I mean, all the topics. But I agree with your points around um, the visibility. Yeah. It's just less is more, right? Like there's so many acronyms. I mean, we, we, we remember, don't forget, this isn't just AI. This is cloud native, right? We already have a whole nother camp of acronyms to to deal with. And that's important too, I think, it, to have cloud native there. So, um, so how about we start a discussion, Slack discussion, and then we... we... Yeah. Somewhere. Also, like, yeah, yeah, I think it's a good point, Ricardo. Let, let's start a thread there on the on our channel and just maybe consume the feedback. And I also want to review this 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 work and just to see. So we've been focused on training plus inference. Like, what about like fine tuning? Like, what about other techniques? I don't know, rack. Like, do we need to speak about all the other things around uh, data prep maybe as well? Uh, like, Vijay, like, what is your perspective? Like, should we focusing just on training initially and maybe tuning as well? Right? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I fr I frankly think we need to uh, add more scenarios here. So 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 what you're saying, uh, 
uh, Andre is is absolutely on track. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I mean, th this so, is this is like adding a reference, right? Like we, we, one of the things we didn't get around to the last one was a reference architecture, and all these things lead to that. Like, I mean, just as a thought, like maybe you know we lay out, you know, as the steps, right? This inference is at the end of the rainbow, right? Basically, right? Like, so we got to deal with, you know, as just mentioned, like there's the, the data preparation, there's the training, training or not training of models. There's, ref, there's, you know, rag refinement, reasoning, right? All these things, ultimately that becomes a reference, right? And we're just picking and choosing bits and pieces, but at some point we should probably show this tech, you know, cloud native tech doing all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And uh, Andre, Ronald, uh, Ronald, um, even who I mean, uh, if you don't mind, please and uh, please uh, add these as comments. You know, because uh, uh, it sort of triggers, <laughs> you know, minds uh, of everyone. Uh, please as uh, add these as comments. Even just just uh, you know just specific bullet points without expansion will do. Uh, it'll help. Yeah. Sure thing. Sounds good. Anybody wanna one uh, take a one last comment about this before we move on to the next item? Yeah, I can I can just say one thing. Um, so AI workloads is as as we've been describing is quite a, a broad uh, umbrella, which might be the intention here. Uh, but just a point on when when Rag was mentioned as an example of Rag, right? So RAG has two things, it has a, a, a web server standard workload, and then it has the model itself that actually does need serving and has special requirement when it gets scheduled. Um, so one idea, and I'll commend that also uh, to your doc, um, which I is, uh, if we take an example use case, I want to deploy a RAG, here's what a RAG means, and here's how I would schedule uh, the different components and what the different components are and what are the requirements of each of these components so are able to schedule them correctly, right? Um, yeah, so for example, uh, taking Langchain as, a, as an example, Langchain is more or less a wrapper that calls to a model which is deployed somewhere. So you, you need the, the components of the rag usually is like a, a vector store, which could be hosted or uh, on or managed or self-managed. And then you have the, the model itself. You could use it with something like Ulama and then Ulama requires different, has different, uh, uh, serving requirements, memory, CPU-wise, and so on, and then especially memory. And then there is long, long chain itself, the web application, think of it this way, is not different than any other service. And this is really not much different. And so breaking that down um, and and be, being concrete probably could be an example that we can provide here to make scheduling more concrete. And then for the training part, we could also take a, a training use case of uh, how to do that. But this would be like a a very uh, deep dive into use cases, but I think it's helpful, personally speaking. If I'm reading this and I can relate to the different pieces of piece architecturally, and as if you're writing a standard, so you know, I used to write standards. So we're basically being generic about the components. We don't have to say line chain, but the LLM wrapper or the uh, the model or something like that, I would give a reference viewpoint to readers that yeah. are actually yeah yeah they, they need to be able to act on things right narrative form is good to a point but they need to be told how to fish absolutely mm -hmm. that's good um yeah i, I think rag the scheduling on top of rag there's many things right so yeah how, how you schedule the the model how you schedule your vector database how you schedule um, your your chain or, or what type of applic LLM application you have, right? so that and this is just it, this is just LLMs, right? But you're talking about predictive AI is another area, right? So so it can be pretty wide, um, but it from what I'm hearing, it this sounds like kind of like the next big thing that maybe the working group wants to focus on, but then I think we'll we'll keep evolving maybe in the upcoming meetings and see what what the people's interests are. Uh, but I think this is a good segue to the next topic, right? The the proposed roadmap for the for the working group. Uh, Adele, do you want to 
Yeah. So as, as part of that, like, you know, we're growing in numbers and we're growing in size in it. I think this is awesome because we could multi-thread on different things, but we need to share the common goals. Like what are we producing independently? You know, uh, look, if we, if I'm working, let's say it was Ron and, and Jai is working on, on with, with, uh, with other folks, like, uh, so on. So what, what is the mission that we're striving to achieve? And I think, you know, when we, so there's a blog post that, um, uh, that we wrote, uh, to highlight the learnings from KubeCon and people asked, you know, during KubeCon, what is the main focus? What is the artifacts that this group will be producing? And then we came up with a set of questions that will, of course, this is not all the questions, but an example of things or problems that people are looking for answers for. Uh, and examples of like, what is the impact of AI on sustainability? What is the impact of uh, cloud native AI on businesses? What's the ROI of deploying things? Uh, how, how, uh, how to improve inference speed and so on. So I, I was thinking, these are all questions that we can answer in either forms like what you're doing today with scheduling, like answering especially like, okay, if you want to increase inference speeds or you want to improve scheduling, here's how we do it. Um, and these could be blog posts, these could be separate white papers, these could be you know, artifacts, but at the end of the day, we if we agree on a set of problems, let's say 20 problems that we can parallelize and work on groups to solve, then we can address a net new set of content that we can then later use to, and then th these contents also address the personas that we described in the in the in the cloud native uh, uh, working group white paper. Yep. yep. So we have a yeah. set of personas, and it, when we're talking about the, each set of problems, usually, and I, 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 that's my personal point of view, and I'm happy to 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 to, to change it. But I see us referencing the personas that we have highlighted as beneficial to standardize on, on the language and the personas that we're talking about. Um, and then we can later on use the content that we all produced as, and this is the idea that I talked about last time. So how can we provide reference architectures that are multiple ways you could, you know, we could write a reference architecture and reference the things that we talked about. We could also do something like, um, uh, you know, eat our own uh, food by providing a language an, an application, uh, an LLM application or a RAG application that gives people reference architecture using the content and the post that we produced as reference. Um, and, and then finally, uh, we could, you know, we're working on things like the radar. So TLDR, we produce content. How are we producing the content? To what aim is the list of topics that we probably should agree upon and parallelize? and then referencing the personas and artifacts that we can produce are things that people can immediately interact with like the radar uh the the, the landscapes the llms that we can produce um as reference architecture but all of this needs data and the data like you know like any ml uh we need to produce the data and so the data is probably what we need to focus on uh, at least at least for now so this is just an approach, think of it as an approach that I'm proposing uh, or a roadmap that, you know, depends on how you want to look at it uh, for, for tackling at least the next three months of work, four months of work. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. We have two hands uh, raised mm -hmm. uh, from... Uh, uh, yeah, maybe maybe quickly, like, I, I agree with you, Adele, like, but I think, like, we have a lot of challenges in the white paper, so maybe we can, I mean, because there are like we need like around five to 10 years, right? To work on all of this. So I would say maybe we should start with something small and address just some of the challenges, you know, like, like so we have right now the doc right there around AI like versus scaling, right? But maybe we just going to reiterate on what we said in the white paper and then slowly try to, you know, create the like reference architecture. So like the doc, what we suggesting community to work on, right? Uh, because even after KubeCon, I saw like two new working groups in Kubernetes was established, right? And people in Kubernetes community start working on this. So slowly through the challenges, maybe we can help people to do better, you know, yeah. ML and on it, right? So the, the questions here are basically direct from the challenges, right? So this is a set of, even a subset of the challenges, right? And so we focus on addressing, so this is just formatted in a question form, uh, which I like to do. Uh, but this is really just the challenge, the, the challenges that we discussed.
how how are we uh what are we producing to solve for these challenges as a working group right and that's basically you know i gave the example of scheduling uh, uh which we were just discussing we could produce similar artifacts for the challenges that we decide are enough as an mvp to get out as content Kathy, you have your hand yeah. raised yeah, I, I think, you know, I agree with this. I think we can probably like a, a document on the roadmap, which is like a detailed elaboration of the, you know, the subset of the challenges uh, in the white paper that we, this working group would like to solve. So we define that, we define what, and then later we can say, okay, what are the uh, priorities or, or what are the, maybe we, solve one for which one we will solve first and which one will solve second, something like that. And then we have that. And then we can, uh, yeah, we, we, we can agree together on, on that. And then we either, the later is how, how to do it, either reference architecture or, or some building, whatever the delivery is, you know, or even we can develop something. Uh, I think we, that, that's my, 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 my thought, like starting from what, and then we discuss how. Um, the word is a detailed, um, um, no um, detailed uh, extension of the challenges we we this working group would like to concentrate on. Yeah, how do other folks feel about this? Because I think all the in everybody's interest is different, right? So everybody's uh, skills are different and are interested in different things. So does it? And and then we also want need like some critical mass for each one of these initiatives to accomplish something. So just wanted to hear from other folks on the call and about how they feel about just focusing on a few things whether, or actually just picking some of the things that they're more interested in. What what are, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think next, uh, someone raised one. Human, uh, go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so I think this is a, a good discussion, uh, but I uh, start from a different perspective. I would really want to get something running and then uh, get the, you know, Kathy, a follow up your own what and how. I would also want to have a who. Uh, so the who is that, uh, what's, who is our uh, customer and who is our uh, people from the community can participate on this individual project and draw everything into uh, you know, reference architecture. So I would rather start from identifying potential use cases within CNCF as the customer. So um, individuals from this working group or a greater community can create applications using you know, reference architectures. And then we can come up with um, certain stories based on that. Because it's going to be end-to-end -end, end -end experimentation and it's going to involve different uh, people from different companies. And I believe that is probably one of the best manifesto that we can move in things around uh, rather than just uh, writing papers without substantial evidence that we are able to produce reference architectures using real world applications. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I think, you know, when we talk about what we should talk about the use case, yeah, that's a great point. And why, right? Why would I, why we want to do that? I think we document this, you know, use case, what, why, and then later we talk about how, right? We do, it has a real application or a reference with a reference architecture to demonstrate, yeah. you know, the value, right, to the customers. Yeah, I think what, I mean, what you're saying is having more tangible things, right? Like some more. Yes. Yeah. Rather than, than just only white papers, right? Because that's that's also helpful. yeah. So if you, if you look at the uh, uh, this third bullet point. So use the content to produce and then also uh, use it for CNI knowledge LLM, which was actually what we talked about last time. So th this is an example of an artifact that can be produced and can be patternalized upon. Uh, so the knowledge LLM is human is the, is the thing that we wanted to, to look into. Uh, and the use case LLM is, is basically using data, uh, but for a different purpose to provide reference architectures. So these are artifacts as well that are not text uh, that are also mentioned here. The idea here is uh, what do we want to, so what's the skeleton, right? And I think that, you know, if we, if we, if we keep, um, you know, should we, should we focus on this sequentially or can we actually parallelize and then reuse? I think both are possible. 
but this is this is like the first step here is about content production and uh, whether it's white papers, blog posts, and then the second is products where you think about it as projects that people can produce as artifacts to the community that helps answer questions uh, in a more tangible way and show and tell basically. And this is all, you know, first and third bullet points. Yeah, I think that sounds good to me. Like we could have right now the scheduling AI workflows, white paper is something working on, but if, if we go out and try to create so many white papers then it's going to be like, we're, we're just, going to, just going to start a lot of things and we're not going to get anything done basically. So you just kind of have to focus on certain things. And then at the same time, we can have like the tangible things, like some other folks work on, on some of the projects and, and things that can be helpful, like reference uh, implementations. How does that sound to everybody? So I I can lower my hand here. Um, <laughs> Adele's right. We need a plan. It's it's just that simple, right? Like we need a plan. There's too many people, um, and too much to do. So uh, to that point, hundred percent agree. Um, I would say this though, I think to to Ricardo's point, you know, we need critical mass to get anything done. But the the reality is, is we're the ones doing it. <laughs> so, so we don't need to wait for other people, right? Um, we need more facts to back things up, but we also have experience as well. So I don't, there's no reason why we can't do both. You know, what is both producing white papers or, or a reference? I would say, Adele, we should just throw up a, a spreadsheet and just have for now what people want to do, right? Um, just to, at least so we can kind of get that out there. And then um, there is things we got it. We, we just, we do need you know, backup, right? So uh, there's lots of other things we could do we haven't even mentioned, right? Like, you know, Ricardo said we may have too many white papers. Well, that means we could send out a blog, right? It doesn't have to be a white paper, right? We could do email, we could do, right? You know, we got to think of why we even exist. Um, you know, I wasn't there on day one, but I, I got a pretty good hunch on why we exist, right? We're trying to educate people on how to use cloud native stuff for AI, right? And they should be able to come here and find that out, right? And it can be opinionated to a degree, right? It doesn't have to, you know, we we only have so many resources and so much time. Um, but if we're out going out doing surveys and doing all that takes time and it's not it's it's as hard to do a compelling survey as it is to just go build a reference implementation that's opinionated, right? It, it's it's uh we need a lot of these things and we're not gonna solve it on on day one, right? Um you know, I, I'd say the only thing to really add here, Adele, would be is let's get a spreadsheet out there for everyone to kind of just enumerate these things as well. But yeah, we, uh, to your point, we we need a plan and, and we need to focus in on a couple of things, which we already are, right? Um, but we should probably keep that cadence as well or else or else we're not going to, you know, have a lot to, to show for it. Yeah, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I agree. I'm thinking we probably can create a document that, docu that you know, list what we want to do, right? And for each what, we we need to write the use case, I think, you know, so that we know we have why we want to do that, uh, to justify the what. And then, you know, I think that the scheduling one, which VJ put that, that, that's a good one, you know, one of them, right? But we can probably put other people have other thoughts we can put there. And then as a working group, we can work together to see which one we are going to deliver first, right? So the form of delivery, yeah, either it's a blog or it's a, it's a project, you know, I think, you know, we can, yeah, that, that we can discuss further. Okay, so I, I'll formulate this better in a document on the what's. Uh, and Ron, let's let's work on creating this sheet in the, and, uh, and then, you know, do we want, how do we want to converge it? Should we share this next meeting and then go through the sheet and, and I think it's important that once we have the what's, everything we want to do, uh, and I'm I'm sometimes putting my product hat unintentionally. <laughs> um, we, we we probably want to see what what is most impactful as a group to work on and what people want to work on, and so yeah. and probably yeah. Yeah, they can create the, the the spreadsheet and sh share it ahead of time, and uh, so people. Un see it and understand it and we can discuss in the next meeting yeah we can discuss next meeting i think uh especially i think i would like uh, i think if for each what um 
it's better to provide more detailed information, like in the views, not just the, I mean, a title, because as you describe that work and also describe the use case, so people in the next discussion, we, we, we know, okay, yeah, which one, you know, the group should work on first, so the priority, right, of the work. And maybe we can have a, you know, this squad, we can probably discuss, you know, maybe one or two meetings, right, people may have a more opinion, more inputs on, on what, yeah, give people some time to think about that. Great, great, great. Yeah, yeah. Andrew? Yeah, just let me add the, the, just a small point in this. So also like about the point that before we actually start to build something, we should definitely explore the whole cloud native space because I've been there for like last six years. And there are so many really good projects which already been exist, like for feature engineering, for training, for tuning, for AutoML. I just think we probably should write this blog post or sub, sub white papers, I don't know how we can call it. And like, uh, try to like basically guide our community who wants to address some of these use cases with specific folks like whether it is feast community whether it is qflow community whether it is i don't know volcano community or q community right so more people can contribute on the existing solutions and help to address the challenges and the problems that we've been discussing right because like a lot of these communities are struggling with some active contributors and i hope like we can help to grow them more right and it's very hard to focus on everything because like AI my life cycle is a huge, like it's one of the biggest scope in the world. So we need to be focused. I, I think we mentioned this before, but starting with the use cases, starting what the community wants to work on and guide them to the specific people to collaborate together, right? Um, so I hope this also will be part of our goal moving forward. Um, yeah. 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 So I agree. I think, you know, that when we identify the what, right, we can put the how, which that some of existing open source projects, that's how, right, we can put there. Or if we find a gap, we can think about whether we are going to do in this working group, develop it, or we are going to join the existing projects, right, to solve those challenges. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, that's a segue to this item on the agenda. I don't know, Adele, you want to, because I think the, having the onboarding uh, will be good to have. I mean, yeah. Just, so it, it, it's all connected, right? Uh, so I think we discussed uh, also last time. But so the onboarding guide is basically, you know, we've seen people joining the group, but not sure what to work on and how to work on things and, and so on. So this is, again, so this PR specifically is something that um, is derived from re recent discussions. Uh, also, uh, what Ricardo replied and what I replied on how to contribute. So it puts steps on for people who are newly joining what to do is in the working group. And this will evolve as the more we know what we're doing, the more this will be more, uh, the more uh, clear this will be um, to people on pinpointing, let's say, if you want to contribute to this idea, then here's where you should go. But at least this is a start to put people in, you know, in, in the right order of things as long as, you know, when they're newly joining and not sure what where to go or what to do. And the glossary and the personas are basically abstracting away all the jargon that we're using in our uh, uh, documentations into a separate sections because it's not just the white paper that will produce new jargon. We will be producing new jargon everywhere. So we will need a glossary to have as a reference for people to, to look into. And then the personas also you know, edit it as part of the glossary, but I think the personas adds to the language that we speak. Uh, you know, we we have the uh, the data engineer, the data scientist, we have the uh, 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 the hardware architect, the platform engineer, and so we're going to keep referencing these personas in a lot of times, regardless of what we're going to be producing. And this helps maybe with consistency in the content and the products and the projects and the initiatives we produce. So this is just about that. Uh, Claudia. Oh yeah, uh, well that was for the previous topic, so I don't know if we want to go back to that, otherwise it, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh yeah. We can, yeah, uh, yeah, we should finish with the yeah, with the agenda. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. All right, so uh so this looks good. I mean uh and this is in progress. So um anyone wants to add to this, I, I, here's the PR and can contribute to that. I think we can, 
we, we already said that we're going to create a spreadsheet. So we'll take that as an action item. And I think we can talk about this, the Huamin, the, so we- Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have already created a lot of contacts around this project. So the idea is that if you um, can open up the document, so credit is to the Adele who creates this uh, document. So we do have a lot of, uh, you know, as we discussed here, uh, lots of information is already in the community that has not been well exposed in the best navigatable way. So creating this um, summary of what has been going on in KubeCon, in CNCF landscape, in the blogging, and even in the members' news page um, will be very helpful to get information and then uh, uh, summarize in a nice way so people can just look at it to understand what is going on and potentially can match up what the challenges are and what are the solutions. So this could be a very good educational way. The other thing is that uh, I believe that uh, people get into the projects, maybe you know, on their way to become CNCF ambassadors. So get more people involved in developing the projects to help CNCF to, in a more tangible way. It's also a very good start. So that's my two thinkings around this um, motivation of this project. So uh, the detailed technology and how things can be done can be discussed in a separate way. But I do want to get some people's attention so they can join these um, uh, small projects and help the community as well as the CNCF uh, TLC to manage the vast available content in a nicely way. So using the uh, latest technologies. And yeah, this goes back to the tangible solution or something that we wanted to create. So or something that people can can follow and, and start learning and start using the different technologies. Any any comments about this one from anyone? I think I, it, I agree. Uh, go ahead, Noel. Uh, sorry, I was just gonna say I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, so I, I have a quick point. Uh, so I'm not sure what is, uh, so this is like creating a newsletter or it's like a summary. I'm really not sure what yeah. is the outcome. Yeah, right, yeah, spot on. So the idea is that I will create the, the web page and also the dashboard so you can navigate to the topics and that happens in the CNCF publicity. Uh, this could be a one of the items we can add to the CNCF weekly newsletters or bi-weekly newsletters to promote AI um, landscapes and AI news. Uh, so whatever we have discovered, and that could be TBD in the solution. But I do feel that the visibility uh, that's gathered in the community is very important to, for people to follow up. Um, the fine tuning, that's actually uh, a separate things we are discussing at the moment. So it's the, the idea is that so we're using the CNCF as a, a public facility to help people to accelerate their community management by using large language models as a review boss, as a community mediators, things like that. It's still under discussion, but it's, I hopefully that can also get some of the attention in the future and also a tangible product from this working group. Um, another way to look at this effort, maybe just think about all the information we generate, uh, unstructured data, right? and it's hard to navigate. So using this LLM, we can turn it into structured data. That way, mm -hmm. when people come to find information, it's easier for them to navigate. Yeah, that's a very abstraction to describe it. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. The other way I was thinking about these type of LLMs, whether it's this one or anyone that we will produce is, uh, remember when I talked about like giving an idea about, you know, especially in the scheduling that we give the form of a uh, reference architecture highlighting the components. This is a concrete example of a use case that we have components highlighted, for example. Oh, we're building a RAG application. Here's actually the components that are involved and in how to do it, uh, referencing back the scheduling paper and how we schedule it, how we did it. Uh, so that could be also kind of like the part of the eat our own food by first uh -huh. identifying the architecture. And then uh, the implementation as a reference for anyone to come and wants to build something similar. So if uh, we can invite Adele as our PM head into this project, that's really great. 
the hell do you want to be? <laughs> get, get the word. <laughs> oh yeah yeah so I, I yeah i think i think that this uh this is a great initiative and by the way uh before before we forget there is a lot of students that i think are interested in contributing you know to our working group at least uh people reached out to me uh human i think you, you, you know people reached out to you as well and uh -huh. i think this could be a great segue for participation as well from a community perspective yeah yeah that would yeah that would be great uh and, and and i think the onboarding will help and you know for them to to navigate uh, where they can actually help out so maybe we can just uh, first start off from the um the work group slack channel and then create this uh, onboarding process for these people to get started and using this as an initial project they can start with and then maybe we can spend all or other initiatives uh, create a tangible assets from this working group. Yep. The, the onboarding is still very green now. It has six steps, but you know, it could it include way more things. But as we get, as I, again, as we get clear about and, and, and produce more as we evolve, uh, the onboarding will be way more helpful than it is today. And uh -huh. I, I wanted to ask him and what, what are we like, I think, I think we discussed this in our Slack, but I wanted to raise the question again. What are you missing? For this to have a next step, right? What is the yeah? So the next step, I really want to cover the people who committed to this uh, initiative. So um, either from voluntary basis or from a hobby basis, so they can uh, they, uh, contribute to its um, sustain it and maintain it. So that's what it looks to me is a very good project for a CNCF investor track, right? So if you want to become an investor, there's a certain commitments uh, contributions you have to make to the community. This could be very, very well positioned as one of these requirements or just uh, contributions. So that could be one of the ways we can get more people on board. Also, create this uh, initiative. We are half of the community um, as ours. Also, as the, you know, Kathy, you and the TOC could be all also benefits from the community evaluation. Yeah. Um, health evaluation like, you know, projects, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Operational yes. side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so I think we have eight minutes left uh, for maybe these two items. Uh, we'll continue working on this onboarding and with uh, I mean with this uh, initiative. But Ron, uh, maybe we can give a quick update on the landscape and radar. Uh, yeah. So yeah. very very short. Uh, we got a little bit of uh, suggested guidance on how we can proceed with the Git repo. So that was kind of the holdup. There's a lot of just paperwork and a lot of shuffling of papers, right? We didn't want to keep wasting everyone's time. So we're trying to find the home so we could actually just all work on the same kind of artifact, right? So we got some advice. Unfortunately, I didn't get to, to execute on that advice uh, last weekend. I will this weekend. So uh, I should have a more substantial update there. And again, the goal is, is by having the location where the data is going to be ingested, uh, anyone can then go in and start uh, doing it, right? Without us having to rework and migrate and do all these things. So that's really what's going on with with the landscape radar. Um, only thing to say there is, you know, we've, we've got the head nods to agree to, to give it a shot. Um, I think that will derive from the landscape to a large degree. So um, it's a secondary concern um, for me at, at the moment because uh, all that data is going to come from there anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the update there. Any questions or concerns? So I promise to help. So let, let me know if if this if you can parallelize this or if there's anything that I can do as well. Uh, I, I've seen the comments, uh, so yeah. let me know. Yeah, you just let me let me give it a go, and then I'll I'll update everyone and get, ping you when I'm flailing. <laughs> yeah, you do have your talk except into AI dev. Right? So, oh yes, it it is our talk. <laughs> our talk. Our talk. Yeah. So so yeah um yeah thanks for bringing this up um so I uh proposed a talk to AI dev on cloud native artificial intelligence. And the goal uh, is very simple. It's really just to get people educated on what's going on. So quite frankly, what this group is doing, right? So um, I would just ask anyone here, if 
if you are aware of, you know, salient points, things that people should know, maybe a new project that I haven't heard of because I don't hear about everything, um, any anything, right? Just just in this space, um, you know, I don't want to necessarily pollute the the Slack channel, but it's probably good news for everybody to hear things. So if you got anything interesting worth mentioning, please let me know. Uh, so I've been doing a couple of these these presentations already. I just gave a 30 minute one last week, uh, which will be the same duration as this. And what I had, what I did in that talk was, um, 20 minutes of it was demoing cage GPT and talking about it. And then the last 10 minutes was a presentation on, uh, the white paper, the group, how to get involved. And, you know, I've been, I've been doing this a few times now this year. And what I'm realized is, is in 30 minutes, you can only say so many things, right? Um, you don't want to make it just slides because then people go to sleep, but you also don't want to do just demo because then people get lost, right? So it's just trying to find that balance. So um, I'll put the link again in the chat if if you want to take a look at what I did last week. Any critiques or improvements or suggestions, just please let me know. I really want this talk to to help this this kind of effort, right? So it's not just me right and and i'm not saying i'm representing you know like i'm not the mascot of the group but i mean i guess i could be the a mascot for for the group but uh any any input would be great yeah we should have a mascot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, i think uh, tax security sorry. mascot like a raccoon or something <laughs> so Ron, when is your next uh, schedule uh scheduled announcement or anything like that we do have something in the pipeline uh just want to get your availability for the next meeting or just the next talk or next presentation. Uh, you broke up the, fir the first part. What were you? So when's your next available time slot for make announcements or just demos or something like that? You mean when is this this one? When is your next one? Yeah, available dates. Th th this is uh, uh, June 19th. June 20th. Okay. Or, or, or 20th, sorry. 20th, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay. So we will have a couple of Slack. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Do you have a YouTube channel, by the way? Yeah. Any uh, suggestions? Just, just scattered uh, around. It's. Uh, I don't have one, but it, there, it's. There's. I can put the links in, in here. Um, right. Another suggestion here for another uh, CN and I for executive. Yeah. So, so we we've, we've talked about the roles, right? And so this is really on on that an extension at. So I've been talking to some people. Uh, I'm in San Francisco, so I, I just just it's just an opportunity to make make things easier so i've been talking to some people here who do consulting in ai and other things and so we're we're just kind of getting together to to make a a paper um to help us you know from our day jobs but i also worked with them and said hey i'd like to share this with the group here um so we could use it or not use it uh we can make our own whatever we want to do it's just i just wanted to put this on people's uh, radar is that um hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have a, a draft of a, a presentation that we're giving out from a consultant's point of view on you you know the use of of this kind of technology right and so then we can choose to use it or or not and if you happen to be in town uh here in the bay uh let me know and uh, not that i'm against working remotely it's just it's just just a local thing started so that's all i just wanted to share and we can use it great we got two minutes uh do we have kung Kunji or Kunki uh, on the call? I don't think we do. Okay, so um, any last minute things? Um, I, I think we have the action items here for uh, the spreadsheet. Uh, with some some suggestion here about uh, convert, converting st structured data to structured data um, in, I think, any other action? Oh, the the rope, the spreadsheet with the roadmap, and and then also continue working on this uh, scheduling AI uh, white paper and, and provide comments and 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 also changes to the title, maybe like make make it more general or or according to all the suggestions from community members. So one thing I I will just mention very quickly is I also was was chatting with some folks about it. Um, there's a this group is growing. There's a lot of brains that can do great things in the group, and there's a lot of conferences. And I think you suggested an events page as well, uh, Ricardo. And so 
for these particular events, if you're in the spirit of teaming up, I think that could be a great opportunity to join great brains together and produce something amazing. Um, and so uh, I don't know how we want to do it, but I think we have a great opportunity to represent the field and the community by pairing up. Uh, so maybe next time we can brainstorm on how we want to do that if people are interested. Sounds good. We can we can add it as a maybe agenda item for our next meeting. So it's in two weeks. Um, it, I I don't know if we really need a weekly cadence, but um, I'm also open to that if some other folks are are um, interested in meeting more often. But I do think uh, meeting too often may not be as productive too. So right now it's just, it's a biweekly cadence. Biweekly, I think is is good, and we can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, great. Uh, I have a question. So I saw on top of the agenda, there's an item about engaging AI alliance. Uh, sorry, go go to the top of the document, first page. Pending items, reach out to AI yeah. alliance for engagement. Uh, yeah. I wonder who would like what what what. The, the reason is uh, I have uh, per some personal connections with the uh, AI Alliance people in IBM. So if there's interest, I can try to invite maybe their BD or their lead to come to join. Yeah. I wonder what, what, what is the, per like what, what's the interest here? I can help. Yeah, I think that, that would be great. Yeah, I think it's to connect with them, you know, so that we know the work we're doing, okay. you know, at each forum and the, yeah. That okay. Yeah, so we collaborate basically. Like, uh, we we were at a meetup uh, a couple of weeks ago with the AI Alliance, so we connected with some members there, and we told them we talked to them okay. about the cloud native uh, white paper. I see. I think it uh, will be who? Dean Wampler, uh, Alexei, and Dean. Oh, yeah. Alexei and Dean. Yeah, yeah. I I work with Dean a lot, so uh, if there's interest, I can just invite him to here, and then maybe he can give some more deeper dive. If yep. that's yep. of interest. Okay. Yep. All right. Let me talk to him. Okay. All right. So we're out of time. Well, let's keep chatting on Slack. Thanks everyone for joining and we'll see you around. Yep. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.